All right, so I want to talk about um, how you would draw and explain the neural, uh, the neural circuit that creates the center surround organization of the ganglion cell receptive field. Um, and there's qu it's quite a lengthy explanation, so I'm going to start by making a drawing here, and then I'm going to talk about and show my explanation for what all of this is. So first thing I do, you know, this doesn't have to be beautiful, but I draw here what is a ganglion cell. So hopefully I spelled that correctly, I think so. So there's a ganglion cell right there. The next thing I do is I basically just draw my transducers, bipolar cells, and um, I kind of show like, you know, how this is going to look. And I'll explain as I go along what's going on here and why these things are the way they are. So, show that. And I want to kind of put a line in here to, to divide these two spaces here. And this is going to be the center, and this is going to be the surround. So we have the surround on the outside, we have the center in the middle, and we have essentially just four cells. I mean, there's many, many more in, in the case of an actual one. Um, but to show this, we just kind of do it. I just kind of do it this way. So I'm going to show also light. So light is hitting these transducers, okay? Now, before I go any further in, in the explanation and the drawing, I want to start talking about exactly what's going on here. So the circuit I'm designing is going to explain this process for what's known as an on-center, off-surround receptive field arrangement. Um, but the process is essentially the same if you were to draw the off-center, on-surround receptive field. And it's kind of intuitive. It sounds kind of like the way it does here that the center cells are going to be on, meaning they're going to be excitatory, and they're going to increase the activity of the ganglion cell in the center, and the ones in the surround are going to be off. So basically what happens in this process, and this is probably one of the more important points that you have to remember, is that when light hits the transducer cells, it decreases their activity. So if I were to say, first of all, light is hitting here, as I've shown. So light is hitting this transducer cell right here. It's decreasing the activity of it. So let's say I make this excitatory. And now this is kind of, what you got to understand about this is there's sort of no right or wrong way of doing this. There's several, I mean, I could just as easily have said that this is not excitatory. It doesn't release excitatory transmitter, but releases inhibitory transmitter. So in, the, in this case, I'm going to choose to use excitatory transmitter. So if I think about this for a second now, right, just ever so briefly, I say light hits the transducer, it releases excitatory um, transmitter. But the trip, but this is the, when the light hits the transducer, it decreases the activity of this transducer cell. So what happens? A decrease in excitatory transmitter leads to a decrease in the activity. Okay, so down a decrease in the activity of the bipolar cell. All right, and that's exactly what I have written here. So in the surround light hits the transducer cell and decreases the activity of the cell. So anytime light hits the transducer, it decreases the activity of the cell. If the transducer cell in the surround releases excitatory transmitter, a decrease in the release of excitatory transmitter decreases the activity of the bipolar cell in the surround. So specifically talking about things in the surround, I have light hitting here, it releases excitatory transmitter, there's a decrease in the release of excitatory transmitter, decreases the activity of this bipolar cell right here, okay? And that's exactly what, what, I, what I've shown in my drawing. And now likewise, that goes the same for the other surround cell over here. So I'm gonna also say, you know, this is excitatory and a decrease in the release of excitatory transmitter decreases the activity 
of the bipolar cell in the surround. And since we need to decrease the activity of the ganglion cells in the surround, okay, we want to decrease the activity of the ganglion cell in the surround, and that's because it's in off surround, okay? We want the surround to be off, so we want to decrease the activity. So because we want to do that, um, it must release excitatory transmitter. Okay, so the bipolar cell must release excitatory transmitter because a decrease in the release of excitatory transmitter will, re will decrease or re will result in a decrease in the activity of the ganglion cell in the surround. So specifically, we want to decrease the activity of this ganglion cell in the surround. So this also releases excitatory, excitatory transmitter and that decreases. Okay, so that matches what we're trying to do here. Look, if we do the same thing over here, it's the same principle. Look, it's excitatory, and there's a decrease. All right? So essentially what, what I've done here is I've turned the surround off. So a decrease in the release of excitatory transmitter decreases the activity of the ganglion cell in the surround. And that's what we want to do, because we're talking about an on-center, off-surround cell. So... In the center, light hits the transducer cell. So light hits all of these transducers, okay? Light is going to hit all of these transducers. I'm just showing it in this one spot for now. So light hits the transducer cell, and the activity of the cell decreases. So once again, I'm going to just simply say that this is excitatory, right? So these are excitatory. And what we see here is a decrease in the activity of the bipolar cell. And the reason for that is we have a decrease in the release of excitatory transmitter. Look, we're, we're, we have excitatory transmitter being released, but there's a decrease in the activity of the um, transducer cell. So what it results in is a decrease in the activity of the bipolar cell. And that's again in the surround. So we need to increase the activity of the ganglion cell in the center, okay? I mean, it, I should have said that's in the center. Um, Anyway, we need to increase the activity of the, of the ganglion cell in the center. So bipolar cells must release inhibitory transmitter. And it makes intuitive sense. I mean, just think about it. Look, if we use negative, I'll use a negative sign to show that we're releasing inhibitory transmitter here. A decrease, okay, because remember the bipolar cell's activity is decreasing. So a decrease in inhibitory transmitter results in an increase, okay, so an increase in the activity of the ganglion cells in the center, or the ganglion cell in the center, all right? So that is the way this process is done, and that's how you would discuss and show the center surround organization for the ganglion cell receptive field.